I'm John Buchanan. In last week's video, we looked at drum replacement, the idea of taking an Apple loop and converting its constituent little individual hits into separate MIDI files so that they could be applied to different instruments. And what we're going to do is pick up on that idea, but actually look to create a beat loop entirely out of hand claps this week, again using drum replacement. So what exactly do I mean? Well, it sort of stands to reason that if I can clap a kick drum pattern, and then I can clap a snare drum pattern, and then I can clap an another instrument's pattern, then effectively what I can do is to begin to take my own sense of groove and then convert that into individual MIDI regions, which means it's a new way of being able to program beats. So what I've done is to set up a microphone on the desk, and the other thing I'm going to do in preparation for this recording is to make sure that the monitor level within the room is low. Now, Remember, I only need to individually record the claps that I'm recording, and I don't need to be able to hear them back, so I can mute the channel that I'm working to. But in terms of actually staying in time, I've got two options. I can either put on a pair of headphones and turn the monitor level down altogether, or I can just make sure that the volume of Logic's metronome coming out of the speakers is low enough that it won't then trigger individual detections of those hits when I then convert them into MIDI. Does that make sense? In other words, if the metronome is too loud, every single beat is going to be picked up through the mic, and then, of course, it will be converted into MIDI. But there's probably going to be a sweet spot where it's quiet enough that I can hear it to stay in time, but that it won't be picked up through the microphone. So hopefully we've got a level around that point. So what I'm going to do is to arm this mic so that it's actually live, and I can now see that when I clap, those levels are going into Logic. Now, what we also learned in last week's videos is that individually loud bits of audio get converted into high velocities, and lower bits of audio from a volume perspective get converted into low velocities. So if I'm really smart, then what I can do is actually sort of think about recording this kick pattern as I go. I'm going to want a loud, strong downbeat, and then maybe the intervening kicks are going to be a little bit quiet. Now, it's MIDI, so by the time I've converted it, if I need to do some velocity offsets, then of course I can, but it'd be nice to try and get it right first time if there's any chance I can. So let's try that. So what I'm going to do is just simply record a kick drum pattern. Okay, so there's four bars of kick. I'm not even going to listen back to that. What we're going to do is to duplicate this. I'm going to mute the original kick. I'm going to call this snare, and we're going to do exactly the same thing again, and now we're going to record the backbeats. Okay, there's my snare drum. snare drum. I'm not going to listen to that either. This is bold. If it all falls down, well, we'll see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to just record this hi-hat part as well. Straight eights for this. And what's really nice about this approach is that even now, I'm just starting to think a little bit about groove, a tiny little bit of swing in those hat parts. Let's see whether or not that's been reflected through the other parts that I've recorded. Again, quantize can get me out of jail if it hasn't quite worked out the way that I wanted it to. So what I'm gonna do is to mute this part too, and in fact, we'll come back up to the kick part and start here. And we already know, if we watched last week's video, that drum replacement is within the track um, sort of menu, which is up here. And I've got the option to either select this directly from this menu or just to learn its key command, Control and D. And what we're going to do is to start by converting this into a kick part. Now, I've actually got an ultra beat kit in mind for exactly how I want these sounds to play back, but I am going to select a kick part for now. I'm going to make sure that the uh, relative threshold point is low enough that I'm picking up every single sound that I've played. And you can see in the MIDI region, which is being sort of outlined for me as I drop down through this threshold whole point, then hopefully we get to a point where every single one of those um, kick drums has been picked up. And going back to the point about running the metronome live, obviously there's going to be a little bit of the metronome volume that has come into the microphone, but probably I'm only going to find those 
if they're there at all, right down at the bottom. Hopefully the threshold for the sounds that I wanted to record are going to be louder than the ones that might have come through from recording the metronome. So hopefully if you've done the same thing that I have, the relative threshold point will allow you to eliminate those metronome um, clicks as they've come through. So we've got a sort of level here where it feels like all of those individual notes that I've recorded are going to be picked up. I'm going to press OK. It'd be quite interesting to hear what my timing is like. This is definitely not the sound I want to use, but we'll have a chance to hear it now against um, the, uh, the metronome. Okay, so all the velocities are quite quiet. Again, let's just open this up for a moment so we can actually see them. Yeah, sure enough, they are quite quiet. So again, this waveform has just picked up what it's picked up. So let's just turn them all up, but they're still relative to each other, the same volumes that I recorded. So I can see straight away that I've kind of failed to make the first individual kick um, on the downbeat louder than the one that follows it. But again, now that it's MIDI, we can change it. It's mostly the sense of groove here that I'm trying to see whether or not I've got something as a result of actually having performed this live. Okay, so we've got our individual kicks there. So what I'm gonna do is just to just do a quick bit of velocity sort of shaping on these sounds, because this is the kind of shape I want, where I've got a nice strong beat three and a slightly quieter sort of intermediate pair of hits. So I'm just gonna go through and very quickly just create these little offsets. I want them to be a little bit different each time. So we've got a little bit of sort of natural feel, but we're also just doing some adjustment to kind of make this be what we want it to be and I'm just gonna bring this last one up a little bit too. And again, if I need to, Quantize is available to me just to make sure that from a timing perspective, I've tidied that up. But actually, I'm really keen to hear how this feels across all three kit elements that I've recorded, so I'm not gonna do any quantizing yet. What I am gonna do is come down to the snare drum track, and again, I'm going to convert this. Again, remember, it's Control and D. I wanna turn this into a snare drum part, and again, hopefully, we'll see that the individual notes have been detected, and sure enough, it looks like I've picked up all of those. There are none missing, so this threshold point is working nicely for the snare as well. And again, I'm just gonna press OK for now. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the hats as well, just unmute this. And what I'm going to do again is to hit Control and D and just bring this in. This isn't um, an, a kit element that I can just select directly. I can only do that with kicks, stairs, and toms. So I'm gonna select other, and as, exactly as I did uh, in the last week's video as well, I'm just gonna assign these notes to F sharp one. And then the one thing I need to do before I just confirm this is that each of those individual hits has been picked up. And again, it looks like that's a pretty regular set of running eighth notes assigned to F sharp one. So again, I'm gonna press OK. Now, the sound that I actually want to assign these to, each of these individual kit elements, is actually an ultra beat kit. And just to make life easy, I'm gonna keep the hats here, I'm gonna move the snare drum down, and I'm gonna move the um, uh, kick down as well. So we've just got the three bits of MIDI next to each other. And what I'm also gonna do is just select all three of these and hit Shift, Option, and N, so that the names of the kit pieces are added to the regions um, so that the file names are taken from the actual tracks itself. That's a really useful key command if you've named a track but the region hasn't responded. And what I'm gonna do is to then swap the sampler for Ultrabeat. And I'm in particular, I'm keen to just load a kind of hip hop kit for this and just to see how that feels. So I'm gonna do that for this first kick drum. So there are a number of different individual um, hip hop kits. I'm gonna just select the um, main hip hop kit, which is here. And having done that for the kick drum, I can then just pop into the mixer very quickly and replace the sampler with Ultrabeat. And because those individual sounds have been assigned to the right MIDI notes, in other words, the kick's gone to C1 and the snare's gone to D1 and the hi-hats I selected as F-sharp one, with any luck, we're now going to hear this kind of hip hop loop, which has been created from me clapping. I'm just gonna turn the volume down. I think it's gonna be a bit loud otherwise. Well, that could be worse. What I'm gonna do is to turn off the metronome. I am now gonna cheat a little bit and apply a little bit of quantize, but my timing isn't so bad that I can't live with it. What I'm gonna do is to select a kind of swung 16th note, but I'm gonna take 
the strength of that quantized down to only sort of 50%, meaning that the notes that I actually recorded or the hits that I recorded are now only moving 50% of the way towards sort of perfect quantized. I'm keeping some of my natural groove, if you like, and nevertheless tidying things up from that perspective. Now, the sound I'm not really getting too much of is the hats. I'm just going to turn up my monitor level a little bit more again so I can hear these more clearly, but I think these might need some velocity offset. Sure enough, they are super quiet. So I'm just going to select all of these and just bring up their velocity by grabbing these and they should all kind of come up together. And um, that I think will help us. In fact, what I'm actually going to do with those velocities is just select them here. And I'm actually going to even out the, dynam the dynamics of uh, these velocities, take them down to 25% of their original velocity range, which is here, and just give them a bit of a boost here as well. And hopefully we'll now get a much more even set of hi-hats. Okay, that's coming together. Let's just slightly increase the quantized strength. And again, from a snare perspective, I could dive back in here and again, look at the individual velocities and just look to even a couple of things out. This one feels a bit quiet to me. But what this gives you the opportunity to do is to begin to think about creating beats actually yourself. We tend to think about, okay, well, I'm going to put notes together either into a sequence pattern, or I'm going to put them into a grid, or I'm going to draw them using the pencil tool. And every time we do that, we make a kind of automatic choice about velocity, about the position of that note, and where logic actually adds it in. And if you're actually a drummer, and you don't, maybe you want to program beats at two o'clock in the morning, and your neighbors wouldn't hugely appreciate you starting to actually hit your drum kit. The interesting thing about this is that you can bring your own sense of feel to the way that your drums get sort of put together without all of that additional volume. And here's the really interesting part. If you had multiple microphones available and you're working with an interface with more than one or two inputs, what you could actually do would be to put a microphone under the desk and use that as a kind of kick drum mic. So you could actually kick these patterns either by literally kicking something or just simply tapping your foot on the floor and picking up sounds that way. And maybe another snare, which is on your desk where maybe you can strike a pencil against uh, the, the desk and pick up the individual hits. All the time, you're bringing your own sense of groove to the parts that you're recording, which you then can convert into MIDI and assign to the sounds of your choice. So drum replacement, whether you're doing what we did last week by taking an audio file and taking its constituent elements and turning it into sounds of your own, or whether, as this week, what we're doing is building beats one track at a time by clapping or clicking or tapping those patterns, suddenly there are lots of ways of making beats that don't immediately suggest themselves when we tend to work with pattern sequences or the pencil tool.